A student from your class didn't do very well on the midterm, and she is concerned about the final that is coming up in a few weeks. She approaches you and asks for a study method that is sure to help the information she is learning to stick. Which of these two study methods will help her ace that final? To do all of her studying in one big focus study session, or for her to break up her studying across multiple study sessions over time? It turns out that multiple study sessions over time is a much more effective study method, even if her total study time adds up to be the same as her one big study session. Well over a hundred years ago, psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus brought to light what is now referred to as the spacing effect, that breaking up learning across time leads to better learning. Since that time, many, many studies have verified the impact of spacing on learning. Let's take a look at just one of these studies. In a study by Bloom and Schwell, two groups of students were asked to learn 20 new French vocabulary words. Both groups of students studied for a total of 30 minutes. The first group did all 30 minutes of studying in one day, one single study session. The second group, however, divided their studying up across three days. One week later, both groups of students were given a surprise vocabulary test on the 20 words they had learned. The first group, that massed all of their studying into one single session, averaged about 11 words out of 20 correct. The second group, that spaced their studying across three days, averaged about 15 words correct reflecting a lot more learning than the first group. The thing is, the second group didn't spend any more time studying than the first group, not one minute more. Yet, spacing their studying really made a big difference in how much they remembered. So, we have all heard this before. Cramming the night before a big exam, which is when most studying tends to happen, is not the best way to learn. This is not new. But why is it that spacing out learning is more effective than cramming? There are actually a number of different reasons. Let's talk about three of them. Reason number one, that space learning better helps students learn than cramming. It creates opportunities for retrieval practice. If you haven't yet learned about retrieval practice, be sure you do. It is another top method for boosting your students' memory for what they have learned. Retrieval practice is simply the act of trying to remember what has been learned. Students can't peek at their notes or the textbook when they do this. It relies on students strengthening their memories by working them. Anyway, space learning works because every time students return to their studying, they engage in retrieval practice because they recall what they learned in previous study sessions. The number two reason why space learning is more effective than cramming? It leads to more effective consolidation of memory, basically a fancy word for making memories more permanent, and to the organization of memory, much of which occurs during sleep. Think about it. The more students space their learning across days, the more opportunities they have to sleep during that time. And the number three reason why space learning is more effective than cramming? New learning always, always, always depends on prior learning. Whenever students learn something new, they make sense of it by relating it to what they already know. Knowledge builds upon previous knowledge. For example, say a student has three chapters worth of material to study. If he sits down and studies all three chapters at once, he can't benefit from prior learning. However, if he spaces out the chapters, Chapter 2's learning session will benefit from what he learned about Chapter 1, Chapter 3's learning session will benefit from what he learned about Chapters 1 and 2, and so on. It's about building a solid foundation while learning takes place. It's kind of like laying down a brick wall. The structural soundness of the top layers is going to depend on how soundly laid the bottom layers are. So, space learning does mean that your students are going to have to plan out their study sessions in advance. 
and you might be skeptical that your students will actually do this while taking a full load of courses in addition to yours. However, there are some ways that you, the instructor, can incorporate space learning in the way you teach. Let's go over three of them. Number one, simply make it a point to return to topics multiple times throughout the semester, especially those big concepts that you want your students to walk away with. Each time you come back to a topic, students will see it in a new light given everything new they have learned. Number two, when you can, opt for frequent smaller assessments rather than one or two major exams for the semester. Because if you think about it, when do students tend to study? Right before an assessment, right? And number three, if you have large projects in your course, consider breaking them up into smaller parts to be completed and submitted at different times rather than all at once. Like what you have learned in this video? For more information on spacing and more ideas on how to do it, check out these resources.